Make that big boss less special It ain't no game, but they say I'm Welcome to the second level What's up, world, and welcome back to another code name Morpheus. We are in the basement. That is myself, Tom, and my buddy, Keegan. I think it's episode 36, if I remember correctly. That could be completely wrong. 36? I don't no, that's podcast so. 36. None of, none of code name. Yeah. yeah, it's episode something. Who cares? Episode something. Uh, so today it's, it's we're going to be this you... week. It's this week's episode. It's this week's <laughs> episode. Never, never get your episodes <laughs> dated. Just say this week. Um, so on this week's episode of uh, Codename Morpheus, we're going to be going over the new releases and the sales, which are pretty light this week. But we do have a ton of news for you. I mean, you. We, we've had a few a few big yeah, it's sales just, recently. So it's they gone got in a, and out. They're a light a couple, couple yeah. days, I guess. And, I feel uh, like the one game is always on sale, so That's true. we'll talk about that. So the, uh, the first and only new game this week for PSVR is something you may or may not have heard of at this point. It's called Soul Dimension. And Soul Dimension is a cheapy game. It's only five bucks uh, on the store, but you it's used to, be used to be able to get a sandwich for that from Subway. I know. Now right? it's six bucks for a foot long. I know, stupid liars. <laughs> uh, so it's it's five bucks right now, but it's episodic, which means that it's going to be playing out over an episode of five different, you know, series um, or series season. I don't fucking know. Yeah, five episodes, whatever. <laughs> so twenty five bucks uh, total. Twenty five bucks total it's, to it's get sim- the whole story. Yeah. Uh, but essentially, it's this kind of uh, walking sim episodic puzzler deal. So you're just kind of walking around uh, the environment and solving puzzles, and it's a little bit creepy, but not really. There's if you watch the trailer for it, it almost looks exactly like a, like a game like Edith Finch or something, but with maybe less in terms of some of the weirder things that went on in that game. The, the one thing we both watched the trailer together and one of the things i pointed out is like there's there better be a big payoff in this trailer because yeah. it was a super slow trailer and it slow had something trailer, at the end but i was like some unnecessary fluff in there but it that never they really cut and it really uh, did anything for me i mean but, that's, yeah. i don't know how good the game is but that trailer didn't did not make me want to buy the game it is five bucks so maybe but i looks, i don't like to judge a book before it's cover but i also need to know what i'm getting you into by its cover it's only five bucks then uh i think that Potentially, there's only what, like an hour and a half of gameplay. I don't know, but I'm gonna call you out because you did judge a book by its cover today. The duck, the duck game. You saw oh, the yeah, art, and you're yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. don't want that. I was like, the game's fun. I said, yeah, I did judge a book by its <laughs> cover one time. I'm, <laughs> I'm a big fat liar. Uh, so, the but no, other this, thing... this, this one, it, it, it's five bucks. We're probably gonna pick it up. You probably should pick it up. It's a VR experience. Give it can't it a shot. be. It can't be. I mean, if it's Five bucks isn't too bad. Graphically, it looks impressive. Yes. As we know, that that tends to downgrade a little bit when you put the headset on. But uh, yeah, I mean, it may be worth a go. It may not. If anyone's played it, of course, let us know in the comments below as to what your thoughts and feelings are. So people watching this video can get an insight as to whether it's worth the five bucks or not. Uh, And this isn't really new, uh, but this is worth mentioning. But it's new for some people yeah it's new for some folks in different countries uh, Neptune Flux has finally hit the, the larger market uh, that means it's now available in Canada Mexico and most of South America bar except for the big Brazil. one yeah which is like most of South America so I don't know what the reasoning behind that was I guess some weird like law by law Brazil uh, Brazil is an interesting country yeah let's just say that say in general least, yeah. um, usually it's taxation reasons gotcha uh, but no so I saw this literally right before we recorded uh, Nick the guy who made Neptune Flux post in PSVR or R slash PSVR saying, hey, it's now available in all these countries. And he had a bunch of people localize. If you can go to the post on there if you want to. Uh, I think his name's Nick Petit or Nick Petet. Yeah, I I use um, Petit because Petet sounded weird. But yeah, yeah, either one of those. Um, but he uh, he had a bunch of people help him localize it. So thank you guys for helping helping him out to yeah. be able to get this to other people. Because, I mean, He's as, a we, one-man show. as we know, uh, PlayStation and PlayStation VR is region free, mm-hmm. but languages. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. I'm excited. That Canadian language is really hard to learn. Yeah, I don't know what they would add to Canada, <laughs> but you know, Canadian a store. A couple oots here and there. In, in A's. Shout out to Tigrata. Uh, so <laughs> moving swiftly on from that, because really there's just sales after that, uh, we're looking at P A V R, Paver, otherwise known as Paranormal Activity The Lost Soul, which is the. Uh, otherwise VR. known as Paranormal Activity VR. Yeah. Tigrata thought we spelled PSVR wrong on Twitter. Yeah. And I was like, actually, because I thought the same thing at first. So he wasn't the only one. I was yeah. like, Tommy, type out. Uh, wait. No, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm it is. smarter than I look. But, um, but yeah, but uh, PAVR or Paranormal Activity VR uh, or The Lost Soul, whatever you want to fucking call it. Yeah, it was like 13 years. It's names. a lot of fun and it's on sale. It's uh, down from 40 to 30. That's a $10 discount, 25%. And uh, of course, 
course, we will be talking more about that since I did release some footage uh, to the channel. And also, um, I just think it's worth talking about. I had a really good time with it. So I watched you play that. maybe 35 seconds of that. And the part I saw or heard you play was like, oh, you're like, I'm waiting for something to jump out at me. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of that game. It's jump scare heavy. But yeah, we'll, we'll get into we'll that. Get into that. Uh, the other one is one that seems to be a permanent fixture on the sale uh, roster. Is it a sale if it just PSVR? changes to this every week? I don't I mean, know. still says sale, technically. There's a certain point, I think, when it's going to go away. But yeah, Mervil's, uh a VR adventure is 14 down from 20 still. So if you, you know, if you dig that Mario 64 aesthetic, if you dig that uh, just old Cutesy school cartoon. rare style game, uh, definitely worth looking at. If Keegan you don't, it. if you don't want to be scared from jump scares, you don't want to play happy fun time game. Yeah. Play Murphles. Like literally, you have <laughs> you have a choice between scare your the shit out of you or just have a happy fun time. So you have a choice with those two sales. Uh, but thirty bucks on on uh, Paranormal Activity, I think, is a, is a good price. Forty is actually steep for that game, but thirty is just right about. Where Fourteen it needs on Murphles. I, th- I think that game I've said is steel perfect full price. So yeah, it's go. just icing on the cake. You might be able to, if you do that, you can then get Soul Dimension. Because you saved that the five bucks, That's well true. six bucks, and you still have a dollar left over. You have a dollar left over. You go to the for, dollar store for an add-on or something. Or vending machine. Uh, so that being said, uh, let's move into the news, which is the uh, obviously the most important part of the show most of the time. Uh, and we have some huge news coming out of Gamescom uh, this week. And today, yeah, as we're recording, this t- a couple t- days ago today, for when you guys uh, are wa- Tuesday, watching uh, that we record, and that is it's not directly PSVR related, but it does affect the PSVR in some manner. So that news is that the HTC Vive, one of the other obviously quite popular VR headsets on the market, has just got a $200 price. And that's a steep price, guy, because that's that's a 20% price Price uh, it's a lot. I mean, it was what eight hundred dollars. Yes. Yeah, yeah eight hundred dollars. No, Six hundred f- previously for the HTC Vive, um, which is which I think priced a lot of people out. Yes. Of being able to get. That's why I think. That. That's why I think PSVR is the number one selling just price point alone. Price point, in fact, you don't have to buy a souped up PC to play. You it. still have to buy a PS4, but yeah. Yeah, but the, to give you, I mean, to give you an idea, the price of a PSVR and the price of a PS4 base PS4 and base PSVR, not the bundle. Is the, is same price the same price as the, as the headset. headset was, Granted, yeah. you still need the camera, which is sixty, and if you want the moves, and yeah. it all adds up. But, but still, it's still. that's that's cheaper than the headset. But the headset, so you've not ever ever used the Vive, no. correct? I've used the Vive, I've used Oculus, and I've used obviously PSVR. HTC, when it comes to the definitive way right now to play in VR, the Vive is that way. You're paying for the premium quality of it. That being said, do I think it's worth eight hundred dollars? Not necessarily. What, do I what think it's worth six hundred dollars? Is superior to the PSVR for visual. So the watching. the big thing I noticed right away because I played Vive. I played th- this is the order I played in. I played Oculus, Vive, and PSVR in that order. Did uh, you play the dev kit for Oculus or the full thing? I played both. I've oh. done I've done both. Um, DK one was a shit show. It made you throw up left, right, and center. <laughs> um, but. The uh, the Vive, the the visual clarity is the most prominent thing. I The first thing I put on when I put on the PlayStation VR was clearly the screen door effect is there. And the Vive, I don't want to say the Vive doesn't, ha- or doesn't have it because it does, but is way more noticeable on the, on, the, on the PSVR. Um, like, again, for me, significantly noticeable because I was looking for it at the time, too, because I was comparing the headset. So mm. maybe if I just hopped in and played, I may not have, but... There was, I played it on, granted, I played it on a $2,000 alien machine at Microsoft. Uh, I played their demo. And the, the one scene where I noticed how clear everything was, was I was underwater on a boat and a blue whale, literally a giant blue whale swam overhead. The guy was like, look up. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> and it, it was the, it's the only time I've tried. Uh, well, not the only time, but it's one of the few times I've actually tried to touch something, realizing it's not there. Other than like, I've done a job simulator where I'll reach for a counter. That could have been though it was an early thing for you as well, because I did a lot of that when I started out with the PSVR, like yeah. trying to touch imaginary things, just because I wasn't used to VR yeah. in general. But it's but, but yeah. it definitely it definitely is way clearer. And the other thing I'd have to say, and I think you haven't played, but I'm sure you would agree, and a lot of people if they played would agree is yeah. the tracking on the controllers is a lot better because it does do the two camera satellite thing and the other advantage you have is you have the room set up yeah so you, the, room the, setup. the way you do it uh for those of you who haven't used it you at the beginning you go through and you literally say this is my wall this is my wall this is my wall this is my wall mm. and it stays within that play area and adjust the game to that yeah which is kind of cool i mean they they reckon they recommend certain sizes obviously but mm. you can adjust it 
uh, based on that. So it is, in my opinion, the superior thing. The fact that it's six hundred bucks versus eight hundred bucks, I think more people will jump on on board. Yeah. Five ninety nine, ninety nine. Five ninety nine. Save that penny. Actually, I don't know if it's ninety nine. It might just be five ninety nine. Um, but but yeah, I, I, I think uh, this is good for VR as a whole. Good call. Because more and more people are going to get it. I don't think very many people are going. It's. I don't think it's going to take away from PSVR. Mm. In different audiences. Two different audiences. I think there is, like anything else, you have the Venn diagram. There is some crossover between the two. And I think if somebody owned a Vive versus a PSVR, they'd probably play more on the Vive. But if you're looking to get into VR, I think the PSVR is the is the entry level good version versus like the gear. Obviously, that's the phone. What ones. would you say um, to facts to folks that just kind of are surprised? That I mean, the HTC Vive has been out for a little while, but yeah. I think this is an early price drop. I think you know, considering that VR is just kind of now taking off mainstream, I can I can I consider this to be a pretty early price drop, and it makes me wonder if companies like Sony or Oculus will follow suit, or whether they're just or whether it's just a Vive thing because they realize they've priced themselves I, out. Of I, the th- I think it's a little bit of both. I think uh, I think they priced, realize they priced themselves out, and I think the cost of the technology because I'm I'm fairly certain i mean oculus did a lot of the r&d mm. because they were the ones that kind of pushed us all forward but I, i'm fairly certain that vive probably put a lot of r&d into stuff and they they priced themselves out because they need to recoup that but now they're like oh shit we're not getting the player base we got to drop that down mm. to get those people back or get those people in but i potentially part of the apple situation too yeah the other the other thing i i know too is they came out recently with the new headset not headset but the head literally head strap right. to how it sits on your face. And I watched Jack Septiguy play, I can't remember, I think he played Arizona Sunshine in it. Um, and he said it was a lot nicer because the the issue, and I, I agree with this, with the Vive is it's very front heavy versus like PSVR. Balance I can't explain, really yeah, good. I can't explain how, how balanced it is unless you try it. But like PSVR, I, I mean, you know you have a screen on your face, but you don't feel it. It's really, really very light. Very lightweight screen versus, and the strap is pretty robust. Versus the, yeah. uh, the Vive is very... Like when you look, you you feel like you're being forced to look down sometimes. Yeah. Not like it's not like a twenty pound weight, but it's noticeable enough that you're like, oh, I can look up. Gotcha. So I think it's good overall for VR for people getting into it. I don't think it'll really affect PlayStation VR. I think it'll affect people who want to get both. I think there's more of those. Cross- I'm in that. Oh, I think we are in that that subcategory of people that eventually want to get both because obviously we love uh, VR in general so we've been very much looking forward to uh, owning all three of them at some point uh, but right now you know we're, we're priced into the, the PSVR market and I think it would be better to be able to actually contrast and compare against its competitors because I've always I've always been a firm believer that I think from my my opinion and you might agree or disagree with me is I think the PC market will be the market that pushes mm gaming vr forward because it's an open platform i think psvr and if uh xbox microsoft does something i think those would be the more refined versions and Mm. that's what i picture vive is the more refined version of the pc world but even then you're still relying on steam and all this true so the as much as we complain like we had a new game this week steam probably has 30 new games this week but how many of them are good yeah there is a lot of lot of junk on for psvr I, but so they I have some really cool VR, stuff like the like the rick and morty thing i really want to play that that's true. but we can't have it because it's not a psvr yeah so. hopefully yeah we'll see moving on uh this is exciting because uh this one is something that a lot of folks have been waiting to hear about for a really long time and that is this the decidedly absent game dreams which was announced way way back was like, like three or four years ago yeah like way back towards the well the initial announcement of the morpheus to be honest yeah and uh it was media molecule uh, i believe who were working on it who were and the they did little big planet little big i'm um, so excited for this game and just it was one of those games that when they showcased the footage that they did have of it although i don't know if it was just like purely made for the the, the keynote or whether mm-hmm. it was actually like tech demo stuff was incredible and of course you know when you're wearing a VR headset the dream world or a dream like reality is already what you're feeling so the fact that they kind of take that and run with it with this game was always an interesting concept and I, I don't think a week goes by without someone posting an r slash PSVR what's up with dreams yeah <laughs> so um, yeah it's still in the works it's still on the rails they actually of all the people to actually break this it was rolling stone they interviewed media molecule and they kind of brought it up during the interview and of course that is in the description below if you That's want to read weird, the entire thing weird place to get a news a break weird place to get a news break for for that game we go to all game. outlets here uh-huh. we do the work so you don't have to <laughs> we have next next we have alternative press on here talking <laughs> talking about that new game yeah 
the, the golem. Kiss VR. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting read, of course. Media Molecule is just a, a pretty pronounced company anyway. So in the description below, in the sources area, you'll find that full article from Rolling Stone. But just nice to know this game is still on the cards, I think. Yes. Um, well, I mean, Dreams is coming out. Has it been confirmed VR? Yeah. Okay. I couldn't remember. Yeah. I just know I know a lot of people wanted it to be VR, but yeah. I don't know if it's actually confirmed. Yeah, I'm pretty it's sure it's, uh, it's, it's been on the cards for a while now. Uh, so then, uh, Ancient Amulator is getting a DLC on August 29th, uh, which is two new levels, a new hero, left-handed mode, multiplayer rankings for endless mode, and it's going to be free for the first two weeks to people that already own so you gotta, Ancient wait, Amulator. So you got to, wait, does that mean you got to pay for left-handed mode? Well, no, it's a free if you get for it the first, first two weeks. weeks. But after that, yes. That's dumb. I mean, it's not the most accessible, considering no. that we are obviously big advocates for yeah. accessible gaming. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's... I, I, like I don't this. know how much it's, it's going to be. You know what's really weird about this? What's that? Is the fact that I don't know... We've talked about this a little bit, but there's not too many VR games that get true DLC. Like, you, mm. you predict DLC. Like, there's... Um, what's the what's the tank game that you like that I don't like? Uh, if, Battlezone? Can, yeah, Battlezone has a lot of skins and stuff like that. Resident but Evil had but, a couple DLCs. But there, yeah, but there's not a lot of them that come out because they tend to be indie games and they can't afford to do it so i can see the triple a's having them but like ancient this, emulator is one of these games that i really want to try at yeah, some point and i have it's, it it's on the backlist for um, sure but i this makes me excited because it's i i wonder Already adding stuff well i wonder if i could get the dlc for free before i buy the game i mean and have i'm just thinking box. they're gonna have a pack in at some point it's gonna be well i'm insane. saying if i don't if i don't buy the game right away could i get the dlc for free and then when i finally get the game i already have the dlc for free i'm gonna try know. that I'm gonna try that and I find out what you guys know. It's gonna say unavailable, but I, I, I don't we'll know. Make it happen. I'll find a way. <laughs> find a way. Life, but no, this this uh, this makes me this makes me this makes me happy because this is one of those games. Like I said, I want to play. I just haven't. Mm-hmm. Um, I've honestly not put my VR headset on for a while because I've been overwatching, as you know, and uh, Division. Has I mean, that's updated. pretty close to overwatching so, VR. Ancient Emulator, the character build and everything. Yeah. I mean, aside from the fact that it's static, it's still uh, interesting. Yeah. Um, so. And then we got a bit of the spoopy for you. So this yep, is some nope. spoopy news. This is where I tune out. Bye, guys. <laughs> you've already noped out of it. <laughs> uh, and that is that the It, as in Stephen King's It, VR content is now available on YouTube, and it's called Float. Do you know why that is? Have you ever seen the original movie? I doubt it. I was going to say, what yeah. kind of question is that? So there's a famous scene, and I'll try not to scare you too much. There's a famous scene. Hey, there's a clown up there. Where a young <laughs> child is... Uh, is got a boat that they made out of like paper mache or whatever and, and it floats yeah and they're flo- it's floating down the stream towards like because it's raining it's like going towards the gutter and then it goes down the gutter and he gets very upset about it and then um the, the clown pennywise comes up uh, from the gutter as clowns are wont to do and basically says you know they all float down here georgie they all float or whatever something like that so it's about um, a dead body and, and well not really it's just him being like fucking sadistic and saying you know yeah it's a uh, it's like because it says oh the balloon floats down here they all float down here and you'll float too and then he grabs his arm and yanks him in um but yeah so it's a really really like iconic scene uh and they have actually uh recreated it for the new movie as well which i'm so excited about but yeah this is so i want to sort of preface this when i say it's a vr video it's a 360 video it's it's not really full like usable vr VR. it's just a 360 video that is supposedly done pretty well it is viewable in little star and on youtube itself um but supposedly it's pretty pretty spooky and uh worth the time if you're a fan of that genre slash movie slash you know writer whatever um but yeah that's available now so you can go check that out the link is of course below in the description now this one one, this one this next one has me excited yeah me too um so i didn't know how much you knew about chernobyl but yeah dude i so i know you're a bit of a history nerd yeah I, i may not show it sometimes but i love history and i love like dark history yeah pretty much i mean i was gonna say catastrophes in history um, tragedies yeah i love like as you know i'm world war ii i'm fast i've said many times fascinated with how kind of how that all came about fascinated with any sort of nuclear accident uh three mile island um the the bomb atom bomb testing in uh oh, sure. the bikini bikini beach mm. bikini out toy where they tested the first nuclear bomb and kind of the ramifications from that obviously you have nagasaki and uh hiroshima mm. like so Fukushima. I'm dropping words. Fukushima. That one happened recently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I watched a documentary on that. So I, 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 this man just wants to see the world burn. Ladies and gentlemen. No, it's, 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 I use it to kind of like, why did this happen? And mm. how did, how Learn did humans, lesson. how did humans fuck up so bad? So 
Anyways, are. Chernobyl. Fun fact about Chernobyl before you get into this, go before we it. talk about this. You can actually go into Chernobyl now. Mm. You can actually walk around Chernobyl. There are kind of like... You would not want to go there because it's still radiated. Yeah, there are But you can. sort of tours. It is safe. Yeah. I qu- air quoted so, for those of you listening. Um, basically, this is a VR game, and this was promoted by the EU PlayStation.com, and uh, it says explore the abandoned city of Pripyat in the Pripyat. Uh, in in VR Chernobyl experience headed to PSVR. Now, because it's coming from the EU store and it's about Chernobyl in a documentary style, my guess is it's going to look something like a lot of the other documentary stuff that's on the EU store right now. Now, you know me; I love going to the foreign VR places and and doing that stuff. And England has a pronounced amount of just experiences of just mm-hmm. like TV shows. There's like David Attenborough's Origin of Life that's on there. There's the um, the virtual orchestra experience, which was you know really prophetic. If you want to, if you want to figure out how to make get these experiences, we have a There's video a that'll ping that'll right there for teach you how to, how to do it. Uh, that'll teach you how to do it. An entire playlist. Because because every every PS4 if is you're region North for, American, by yeah. the way, I didn't yeah. pick one to how to make a North American account because we're we, North American. We are North American, but we made it for uh, for Japan, for Hong Kong, for China, and for Europe, uh, specifically England. But it's the same deal. So um, yeah, so this is going to be something that's coming definitely to the European store. I don't, I doubt it will find its way to the North American one if it's any anything to go by with the previous one. I feel like most Americans don't know a lot about Chernobyl either. I, I mean, mean they're, you're, it's you're educated on it, but it's, I feel like yeah. there's I feel like there's a little bit more grip in Europe about Chernobyl than there is in America. I mean, for yeah, for obvious reasons, but because it is there. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> it's a, I mean, for those of you obviously that don't know about the story of Chernobyl, basically is just a, a, a nuclear um, facility that a nuclear had a, meltdown, a breakdown, and uh, it just the top basically literally poisoned literally the, the top li- well they poisoned more than an entire town. The top well, blew yeah. the top blew off a reactor yeah. essentially, and uh, irradiated particles came out. And it affected a mile, I think it was, or an area that I want to say is like 50 to 100 miles in diameter. But obviously the center of it was, you could not live there. Yeah. And I I think they- You couldn't visit there, you couldn't breathe there. Yeah, I think they, they, again, I'm going to air quote this, marked it as safe that you can go there and visit, but- What he's saying is for liability reasons, don't go to Chernobyl, but it should- You can go to Chernobyl in VR- you yeah, save, you're safe in VR. VR. Save yourself the hassle. I think but this obviously is... this documentary team went to Chernobyl, so yeah. to some extent, it's all right to go there. I just assumed they had hazmat suits and radiation meters. Yeah, I don't know like what that. the uh, what the level is anymore. Yeah, I I wanted before we move on. I wanted to be a nuclear submarine uh, technician at one point. Really? I love nuclear science. I think it's really cool, but I also think it's very dangerous. Oh yeah, uh, for I mean, obviously, if it goes wrong, it goes, should go without saying. It goes yeah. wrong. Yeah, so. if it goes wrong. Because it because 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 nuclear energy is relatively clean compared to coal, obviously, and all that kind of stuff. I but watched, there are other sources of it. I watched uh, we last get. week tonight uh, with John Oliver uh, last night, and uh, he has a whole section on like radioactive dumps in America because America mm-hmm. has so many of them. Yep. It was just like literally like people were just told to just dump barrels in the sea for some time and all that kind of stuff. They didn't, they, and they would like either shoot didn't the didn't fucking care. barrels too to try and yeah. lighten them up and everything. It was so crazy. Yep. And uh, and because of this, there were certain areas of America. There was this like news piece about a guy that's like, yeah, we have radioactive crocodiles now. <laughs> it's like yep. <laughs> fucking radioactive. And they have real names. It was like you know diosacridile or whatever. Like it was based off the name of the toxin that it was that it had ingested. So anyway, that's your history lesson. Enough, yeah, <laughs> enough on Chernobyl. I'm sure the experience is going to be very. Follow us on a podcast. I might do a, I might do a fun fact about Keegan's history or Keegan's knowledge of history, history at some point. Debates, yeah, yeah, not? it'd be fun. Uh, I like Drunk History a lot. You should watch that if you haven't seen it. I've watched a couple of them. It's funny. Uh, so Radial G uh, finally has a PSVR launch date for the 12th for digital and 15th for what is physical. This? I don't know what this uh, is. So Radial G is kind of, uh, I mean, it's, I want to say it's like a racing game. It, it reminds me a lot of uh, of Wipeout. Okay. Uh, the way that it kind of Because I've not it. heard of this game at all. Yeah, so, I mean, here's some, I mean, I'll have it behind us, but here's some of the box art. You can tell right by looking at it, it's got, like, Wipeout wipeout vibes in there. Uh, So it's, like, F-Zero Wipeout style racing, but in VR, um, and, yeah, it officially got some uh, some release dates there. So 15th of September. um, Remember, remember, the 15th of September. 12th of September for digital. I don't know why it's taken three extra days for the physical to come out. They got to ship them? I guess so. And they got to package them? They could ship them earlier. Well, if they get stuck in customs, too. (laughs) 
There's a lot of things involved when you shop physically. Customs. All right. Yeah. In case Radio G gets stuck in customs, they just give themselves a couple extra days. Yeah. Uh, but it, it looks cool. I mean, you know, you can see from the footage, it looks pretty dope. And uh, I'm sure we know at least one racer that's going to be excited about it. I really um, like the name of this next game. The next one, I'm going to let you talk about it because I think you know more about it than I do. Um, I, I did not watch the trailer for this and I feel bad because I'm hosting a VR show. But uh, you told me to put it in here. I put it in here. This is Shooty Fruity. Shooty Fruity. Uh, for PSVR. It's been for PSVR. What do you know? What so, do you say? So picture like Fruit Ninja with guns is the best way. I can I can describe it. It reminds me a little bit of like um, it's a shooting gallery essentially, and you have fruit that shoots up, but you also can do you can take those fruits and shoot them into other fruits. Okay. If that makes sense. So it's it's just a shooting so you gallery. Have fruit just, bullets. No. You're just like firing blueberries at things. Yes, I wish that'd be cool. <laughs> Why that, not? That'd be shooty blueberries. Developers, get on it. Um, but no, it's basically it's basically a shooting gallery uh, with fruits. It reminds me a lot of Fruit Ninja. Thoroughly, I, th- I like the trailer. I don't know how I feel about the game itself, just because I don't like shooting galleries um, too I much. Do. I mean, if they're, if they're done right, like I think yeah. Ar- Archangel is seriously one of the most underrated games. Full stop. For um... yeah, but it's not just standing. It's not literally just standing there and shoot. You're actually going through, and there's a story and all this. Well, kind it's of stuff. it's moving the, view. It's on rails. The it's humor in Shooty gallery. Fruity reminded me a lot of Dick Wild, which makes me. That's why I was kind of like, ooh, yeah. this way I got to put it in there. But yeah, I, I'm I'm intrigued by it. I don't. I don't know when it's going to be released. I didn't give a date or anything or a price, but I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on it. But it, it, to me, right, as of right now, just reminds me of like Fruit Ninja with guns. Fruit Ninja with guns. Which is, That's a succinct uh, explanation. It's not a, it's not uh, a bad game. It's just, it's a game. That, it's not a game. I, I think like would, Fruit Ninja. It's not a game that correctly. would, yeah, it's not a game that would sell PSVR, but it's a game you're going to have in your collection when like friends come over yeah. if you want to like, just, just a, do something different. Or some exercise. Yeah. Some. It's one of those that might be added to the exercise, exercise. list. Yeah, we need to make We're that We're planning list. on making a top five game. Dude, I sweat so much in VR. Yeah. So I feel like any game could be that. Like I played uh, Bridge Crew one time and I, t- I turned my, uh, my AC and my fans off because the noise. That's a, Poor decision. I wish they had like a little fan in the headset or something, but I'm sure that would be far too noisy and yeah. difficult to implement. Next up is a game called Manifest 99, which we're starting to hear a little bit more about. So I'm going to give you a little bit of info on this. It's a story-driven interactive narrative VR experience set in the afterlife, and you'll be able to explore its dark and beautiful world on September 12th, 2017. So that's another one around that September time. Uh, so this is directly from the developers. Uh, our team has created a rich, immersive world with Manifest 99, and we're excited to have y'all play it on PSVR. It's been did a you journey. Say y'all? Yeah, I did say y'all. That's okay, what it cool. says. Uh, so I'll it's make sure. It's been a journey creating an experience that straddles the line between dream and nightmare we hope you'll join us in our winding train trek through the great beyond so it appears that trains are heavily involved in it choo choo motherfucker manifest 99 <laughs> is an anonymous eerie story about finding redemption in the afterlife set on a mysterious train inhabited by a murder of crows you assist four travel companions on a journey to their final destination you play uh, manifest 99 without a controller gaze into the eyes of the crows to move to their perch viewing the world from their scale and perspective in addition to the murder of crows you can also use your gaze to connect with your fellow passengers. The weary ghosts of a bear, a doe, an owl, and a crow ride the train with you as well. As you lock eyes with each other, you'll discover more about their personal journey and what brought them to the train. Each passenger represents a chapter of the experience, and while aboard, you must uncover why they and you are on the train. So it's uh, it's a pretty interesting little it's idea. A concept. Cool concept. I would love yeah. to see like a Sherlock Holmes like that. Yeah. You're like you you would you would be in the you wouldn't get obviously the person who murdered people. Like you wouldn't get the, their perspective, but people around them, you'd be like, hmm. I like it a lot. I think it's a really neat idea. I like the fact it's controller free because I, you know, those types of games sometimes are really genuinely interesting. I don't know how they deal with movement or anything like that. Well, but, if you're just um, teleporting, yeah, like eyes to eye. Like, is there anything? Is there anything you can interact with other than just like looking around? Like, I don't know. I'm interested to see how that works. I mean, Headmaster was completely like controllerless, and there's been a few games like that. Uh, Danger Balls cr- controller list as well. So Welcome uh, to the Danger Ball. <laughs> next up is uh, Chess Strategies Mix with Military Might in PSVR's League of War VR Arena. Can, this we, can we just take a second and PSVR developers, please make less generic named games. Well, this one has a kind of a reason for, for having the name that it does. Uh, although that is a generic name. Yes. Uh, there's already a, a League of War game. This is just the VR version of it. And it just looks kind of like a counter top table version of risk or something um it's just you know a lot of uh sending your troops around and and doing all that kind of you know command and conquer style stuff but in vr which i imagine to be semi-enjoyable um semi yeah i mean i always thought like how would a real-time strategy game work in i would love 
now that I got now that I got Skyrim, my new love would be a Dungeons and Dragons style game in VR, mm-hmm. where you could make up your own. Like obviously, you had to have certain parameters because you can't just be like. I, I mean, werewolves, werewolves within is kind of. But that's like not. That. But that's not make up your own game. No, it's like true. Dungeons and Dragons, you make up your own rules. You all this kind of stuff. Obviously, you'd have to have sort of parameters, but you'd have the what is it called? Dungeon Master, I guess. Yeah. I've never played Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. but the concept of the game is really cool. But I don't do board games. Board games are boring games. See what I did there? Well, the good thing they could do about it is that you could set the characters beforehand so that if you're all sat around like a table playing the game but you actually look like those characters and they could mm-hmm. even show like cutscenes of like certain or things. Or like, and... do you ever play Jumanji? The game? The game, Jumanji. No. <sighs> Have you seen the movie Jumanji? Yes. I want that where I play the game and the shit happens in real life except the part where I get hunted. <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> that yeah. part's terrible. That dude just terrify me. Yeah. Like that's what I want. Like to me, if you're going to do like a board game in VR, add something to it to make it that much better. But I think that like those type of things, I would love to be like. Again, I love my stupid games. Oh, I <laughs> punch the microphone. Uh, like Monopoly in VR. If you're gonna play Monopoly, maybe when I get a property, I go inside the building or something. Like stupid yeah. little shit like that. That adds to Just it. Just make it a little bit more quirky. Yes. Yeah. Um, I promise so I have to punch my microphone. There is, again. you know, we talked about this a really long time ago. We had an episode of Level Two VR where we talked about the, the fact that a Mario Kart VR that does pre- exist. Pre code name Morpheus, I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Mario Kart VR does exist. It is only playable in an arcade in Japan. They have the like the full on like uh, you know cars that you sit in carts, I suppose, that you sit in with the VR headset. And as you're driving, you use these special gloves to like grab power ups and like which is really cool. Stuff. And, oh, it's amazing. I watched I watched this before. I don't know if you sent it to me, but I watched it before. If you did, or somebody sent it to me, I was like, I've seen this already. But it was really cool looking because like. It's what you want it to be. Yeah, it's exactly, it's exactly how you want yes. to play that game. Yeah. The only the only uh, thing is it's not here. I want yeah, it to be here. I mean, there is a VR carts game that you can buy on the uh, EU store, uh, but it's, yeah, but it's not nowhere the same. near this. I'm level surprised level they also. don't have Nintendo CC assisting them. Mm. Unless Nintendo Nintendo's involved, which well, makes I this, think Nintendo which, made it, which I makes this even it's... which makes this even more interesting. If yeah, Nintendo made it. Yeah, I think it's just made for arcade only because, as we know, Japan is a big fan of arcades, and I mean, obviously, the Switch isn't going to be powerful enough to run a VR, but uh, maybe it's something they're looking at. Maybe they're looking at. Remember that was this... when that was a conversation, dude. Do you remember? Do you do you do you, do you think remember? Nintendo would ever say, "Hey, Sony"? No. If you give us this money, you could have Mario Kart in VR. I don't think they do it to Sony. I think they do it to a third party, but it would have to run on a Nintendo platform. So like Rabbids and Mario. Yeah. It has to run on a Nintendo platform. So anyway, the footage is awesome. Uh, and, you know, it just if anything, it just makes you drool more for the idea of Mario Kart VR. Uh, so let's talk about that firmware update that happened a little bit ago. We got our update. Finally came through. Or Did that? The I beta. The beta came I was through. Like, I was like, I don't think my system updated yet. Yeah, not the real one yet. But the beta came through, and that was for uh, update 5.0. 5. 5. Oh. Oh. Uh, and it adds 7.1 and 5.1 surround sound mode for do, PSVR. Do you know what that means? Surround sound in different levels. Do you, like know what the, do you know what the seven and five are? Uh, five speakers and seven speakers. There you go. Yeah, channels. Yeah. Sorry. I just, I'm also edu- I'm educating you and I'm educating them. So if you have 5.1, it's five speakers. You have seven, it's seven speakers. There you go. Um, just fun fact. And and you were mentioning this. I didn't see this written anywhere, but I'm, I believe you because generally I trust you. Yeah, I was. Abilities. I don't remember where it was, but I, I think... Uh, I would have thought this I was, would have shown up on the article I was reading. But no, because nobody cares about it. Ability to see chat. If, if you're, you're streaming. streaming, which for us is a huge deal. For huge. most people, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But for us, that's been huge one of our deal. complaints: is like we want to stream VR games on Sunday nights. Follow us at nine p.m. With you, yeah, with, with taking the headset, headset off. So, and uh, I obviously, don't... if I took the headset off, I couldn't hear you guys because I'd yeah. be looking at chat. And you can't type replies. We still were waiting for trophies, still. But I think having chat in VR is going to be huge for streamers, and hopefully, that means with more streamers doing VR, um, especially with the immersion level, it's just going to add to it. Like if I'm walking through a haunted house and something like Paranormal Activity and there's people in the chat room that are like oh my god don't go in that door or like do this or do that then yeah. it's going to be so much more fun yeah so i'm really excited about this when it finally hits and we will definitely be doing more vr streaming when this happens uh by the way i will be doing more streaming in general pretty soon here keegan's going to help me get obs or, or elgato, elgato set up right and um because i tried to do it the other day and then i just got fed up a bit but i now i have the ability to do it and i'm also you know as we all know trying to get uh you know part-time rocking and rolling and uh that means dedicating more time to you guys and more guidance time to the channel which means i want to be streaming i want to get that 24-hour one going at some point i'm excited about that 
Not Sorry, I'm trying. I'm trying to find my source here because yeah. I I read. It doesn't this. matter. I mean, no. yeah, we'll just we'll believe you for now. If it doesn't <laughs> happen, then everyone will hate you. So, yeah. lastly, I wanted to finish off with a sad slash happy piece. It's one of those um, that I. Our buddy sent this to us. Yeah, I was tentative to put it in here, frankly, because it, it, you know, it's one of those. It's a little bit depressing, but at the same time, it's a little bit magical. There you go. It's on. It's on here. So PlayStation VR. Before you get into it, and it gets real sad. Cool. We've added a new setting in PlayStation VR display messages to spectators and spectators comments. Once enabled, spectator comments sent during a broadcast is displayed not only in cinematic view but also in VR mode. This makes it much easier for VR broadcasters to keep up on comments and communicate with their viewers. Is that only through using the PlayStation streaming? Yes. Now? Oh, okay. Which, it's better than nothing. Also, That's true. Uh, good news for Twitch users. With this update, PS4 Pro will support 1080 60 frames per second on Twitch. Nice. So that's kind of cool. Now did you hear a sad story. Yeah, so now is the time <laughs> for the sad slash happy. Uh, and it was brought to us by our friend Tegrado, uh, who lives in the, the, not this area, but in the, the country great, in great which old this Canada. is taking place. And that is, uh, there's a Toronto hospital that's using, using uh, virtual reality to grant wishes to to dying patients of places they want to go to so i'll and read you a little bit of this um, let some, you read and then i'll there's then I'll some adorable pictures in here it was like uh, mika muzi 83 at bridgepoint she's escaping uh with with vr i don't know what type of vr it is it looks like it looks like the gear it might just be the gear yeah um because that'd be the easiest one and the cheapest one for them to get because VR is expensive. Yeah, but uh, but Muzzy said, uh, what you've brought me so far has been beautiful. Uh, Muzzy says, setting the soft black material of the goggles into the creases around her eyes. Um, so her and her like other half had already traveled the world together and you know they kind of wanted to uh, visit Africa. So there's you know there's a VR video or whatever where you can be on like a Kenyan safari and or whatever. And uh, she went there and she was just hanging out, like watching the elephants and stuff. And uh, it's become this thing now where they're actually starting to shoot videos specifically for these guys. So like one guy went out to, um, you know, the Great Wall of China. And, uh, and then he also started filming other things around the area in China, just so you could get the idea of like what it would be like to be immersed in Chinese culture. Kind of like never how you can go to Chernobyl. Right, exactly. Same concept. I couldn't imagine that being a dying wish of anyone. But maybe. Well, no, but that's what I'm saying. They're doing these kind of things. And I've, I've yeah. always said uh, I would love VR to be an mm. escape for multiple reasons. One, like you're saying, for people who have terminal illnesses mm. or want to go back to memory or whatever it may be. Like, I've, I've always said it would be uh, – he's – because I won't forget the episode because I said, oh, go back to 1942. And you're like, probably not that year. But like, go back to like 1920s in this location. So, mm -hmm. you you know, Mr. Uh, Kester, mm. who used to work where mm -hmm. we work, he just posted a picture on his on his Facebook page that he took a picture, the same place that his dad, who served in the military in 1945, took a picture in Paris, right by the Eiffel Tower. And he said that was one of the most emotional moments of his life. Granted, he's there in current time. Could you imagine going back into the time where everything he was is there? like how it was dressed and looked yeah. and you know maybe even smelled that's something they could look at. Um, I mean, but they've started a bucket list of this stuff like literally the patients are just saying here's a place that I would like to go to and the the people that are doing this program are going to those places and recording the footage of how it looks now. The other cool thing is uh, have you seen the Google Earth uh, VR experience mm -hmm. it works on PC ones that's where you neat. can you can go like you use Google Earth. So obviously you can't go inside of buildings but you could if you want to walk down Main Street somewhere you could do that. So that that's, that's that kind cool. of stuff is cool. So, um, so they could use that as part of this too. So here's a little bit of a quote for you. One of the things that patients really struggle with when they get a diagnosis of a life-threatening illness, they can often lose their sense of who they are, sort of lose the sense of what's meaningful to them in their life. So a big part of what we do at pal it's called uh, palliative care is help them reconnect to who they are. So for a lot of folks, it's traveling, obviously, like if they ever have like an iconic memory that involves a certain place in the world, then they can bring that. Uh, snorkeling is a big one, apparently, and that's a, that's a huge one. Um, but yeah, it's just a, it's just a cute like it's like a, a, a news fluff piece. But I just thought it was awesome because we always talked before the release of VR about the many other implementations of it in terms of like medical and, and that kind of stuff, like helping people walk, which it, it has done that too. But I never really thought about it in terms of just like helping someone that uh, was unable to, well, to say, travel about to it, like, nursing somewhere. homes. Yeah, nursing homes, just like just like wee bowling. And I'm gonna yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna save what I'm gonna save for the question we have coming up because sure. i've got a, a few things to say on that but okay yeah i uh i i love this kind of stuff this is this is similar to the time we brought up the story about the the people that were using vr to learn how to walk again mm -hmm. because it tricks your brain and you're like oh my legs are moving and yeah. they're able to start walking and that's 
that shows you the power of this technology, mm-hmm. which is the coolest part of this. Um, Not so, just for video games. Yeah, so one thing you wouldn't want um, Grandma to go through would be uh, Paranormal Activity, The Lost Soul in VR. I don't know, um, maybe Grandma's a badass. I Maybe. Um, but I did, and that's what the spotlight's going to be about today. Paranormal Activity, The Lost Soul, or Paranormal Activity VR, shorthand. Uh, or PAVR. So let's talk about it. So you only watched a little bit of the footage. You didn't watch a whole lot of it. No. So I'll, to jump. I'll lay it out there. Um, basically... It's a short experience. I didn't make it all the way through. Uh, I'll be honest, I got stuck. Like, I was I was so happy uh, playing that game. I had such a good time with it. And I got this into this room where there was a lot of puzzles. And uh, I couldn't figure out the puzzles. I was, like, so stuck. And no one else was playing it at that time. Because, like, it was, like, right when it released that I started. And I started, like... You know, Googling, like, how to get past this, how to get... And there's nothing. There's nothing in there maybe at all. Maybe we should make a guide on that. Yeah, maybe we should. But um, David. Or someone <laughs> fucking should. So, uh, yeah. So, I got stuck, and I couldn't figure it out. And I literally spent, like, probably half an hour trying to figure out this puzzle till I gave up. And I was like, this is not going to be interesting viewing for anyone. So, I cut the gameplay short of when I entered that room, if that gives you a hint as to where I got stuck. So, um, yeah, it was pretty darn good uh my biggest difficulty was playing with the move controllers it is move controller based uh and it's not teleportation though it is literally like hold this button to go forward hold this button to go back hold this button to turn incrementally to the side or use your head so you can like go forward and if you turn your head your whole body will follow the path of your head which was actually not too bad once you get used to it they said or they recommended during the game not to do both at the same time like don't use the incremental turning and your head because the gets very disorientating i did that anyway because that was as comfortable as i could get it to feel embarrassingly enough i also managed to crouch right at the beginning of the game and not figure out how to get out of a crouch so i just treated it like i was a small child visiting the paranormal activity house which didn't help matters um when i was in there and then eventually i figured out how to do it so like they didn't they did an okay job of explaining the controls but there were a lot of things that were left out there um and just move in general is not prime directive like if they if they'd have made it like full resident e- evil style that would have been cool but i get it because a lot of the movement around the house that you're in involves you using and picking up things and opening doors and there's like a flashlight and that kind of stuff and you know the flashlight goes out you have to pick up a battery and put the battery in and then you have to press a certain button and turn the flashlight back on and open the door the door opens at exactly the the sort of effort that you're giving it so you can literally like whack open a door if you want to or you could be really like slow and cautious with it and case there's there's you know spookies on the other side um but atmosphere was wonderful um they had a lot of throwbacks to the the movies if you're a fan of the movies at all have you ever seen any of those no okay um (laughs) never it's all right it's okay but uh it was really close to the experience that i had with resident evil 7 but not quite because it was it was the controls threw me off some they did not feel as comfortable I knew the game was going to be a short game, so there's no way that a two-hour game could compete with, like, a nine-hour game. And, um, you know, it was a little rough around the edges. The scares that were there were wonderful. Uh, I got caught a bunch unaware. And like I said, I'm usually, like, a pretty legitimate... uh, Like, doesn't get scared easy type of guy. But there was a few moments. and, And because I played it, like and recorded it as I went through my first playthrough. Every reaction is gen- genuine to to that game. So there's a lot of moments where like someone would like run in front of me really fast, like a shadow or whatever, or like a little girl would appear out of fucking nowhere, uh, or some lady would just charge after me for no reason, and you know that kind of stuff. The one that stuck out most in my memory was the one I posted up on Instagram, which was um, early in the game. You see like a client watching TV, like a, like a like a punchy clan the ones that have the sand in the bottom Mm -hmm. and you can like knock them over uh and he was just sat watching tv and i was just like okay something's gonna happen something's gonna happen nothing happened and i carried on and then later i end up in a closet which which transferred me into this like other dimension and then when i went into this other dimension there was like 10 of those clowns in one room and they were following my every movement so if i moved here they'd all turn this way <laughs> if i moved there they'd all turn this way and i was like oh my god and there was this this sinister music playing that was like just this uh like record player that was spinning in the air and i was just like oh my god this is too much 
Um, but it was so enjoyable. It really was. Like, I had a great time with it. The puzzles are good. The pacing is good. Uh, I got stuck a couple times, but mostly just due to my own stupidity. There was nothing that I couldn't have figured out eventually. Um, really, really, really good time with it. And uh, I highly recommend it. The price is steep. 40 bucks. it is not. 30 bucks, which is a sale right now, if you remember from earlier in the show is kind of all right for it. I would like to see it preferably more at 2025, uh, so maybe wait for a sale, but uh, all in all, I think if you're into horror, it's the second best experience behind Resident Evil 7 currently on the system. If you like the Paranormal Activity uh, movies, then up that a little higher too for the uh, sort of the throwbacks to the, to the movies and the things that you'll catch and remember. But uh, yeah, really great experience. I had a great time, um, and that's that's that. Said. So any anything you I, want to ask about it? Or no, because I pretty much know. Like I said, I watched a little bit of it, and yeah. I knew it's it's scary game. I've I have no interest in it, as you know, because I don't do scary games at all. Right. But it's I, it's really interesting. One of the things I like with us is the fact that we do play different games, and the fact mm. that we do like different things. And you love your horror stuff, and I've always been dead set against horror. And you try to get me to play. Until you did dawn brave yourself and, through until dawn for a long time. And yeah, for that I'm I forever shaking. grateful. But like. Yeah, I, I will never touch this game, have no interest in this game, but it sounds like it's a decent thing, maybe a little bit cheaper price, mm. but it's a good experience, just maybe overpriced for what Solid it is. Solid experience. The, the movement style is not awful. You will have jump scares. So if you're a horror guy that doesn't like jump scares, not the game for you. Resident Evil 7 has far less jump scares than this game does. Uh, this game almost exclusively relies on jump scares and atmosphere. Uh, so yeah, don't expect to go into it and not get your ass suddenly handed to you out of nowhere. Uh, the the movement of the ghosts and things like that is good as well because you'll just be walking past a door and suddenly it'll rattle real loud and you're like fuck you know and there's a lot of like catch you off guard moments but um, all in all a really good uh, experience and a highly recommended one uh, before, so before we move on oh we missed a we missed a bit of news and it may or may not be VR related okay so we're recording this on Tuesday I think we've already said in this episode Gamescom is currently going on mm. Sony has announced they are announcing something. They did a teaser trailer video move with tubes, a with a red tubes. curtain above it. So I don't know if it's gonna be that. It can be oh, something God, else. Be so good. The, there's a joke right now. It's gonna be the PS4 Pro Slim. <laughs> so, I mean, PS4 Pro we'll Skinny Edition. Yes. So I'm hoping it's Move Twos. May not be, but there is a teaser trailer. Move so... Twos seems like an odd thing to make that big of a deal out of for Sony because of the limited yeah. audience of VR. So I. Decked, it's yeah. Move Twos. It but they, might but they, be but more they're Last announcing of Us something. So I feel like this is just this is just me covering my butt in case they do. If this goes up tomorrow, yeah. If this goes up and you're like, why aren't you guys talking about the Move Twos? Because we didn't know. We didn't so. know. It's Tuesday and it's early. Or it could not happen at all. We just it we're good. Maybe something else. So, anyways, uh, but yeah, I want to make sure we throw that in there before before I, we. I did. still think they're gonna do the PSVR heavy stuff at did PSX. You, did you see the uh, the teaser? No. I'll show you it after when okay. we're done. It's it literally is just a red curtain with lights on it. So it's quite interesting. I don't know if the shape means anything. What's the shape? It's like an L, kind of. It's like short over here, bigger over here, and then just... It's like a picture of a Tetris piece. So I don't uh, know. That could be but I don't know if this, But I don't know if the shape has anything to do with it or not. It could be moved too. So. Interesting. All right. So uh, the question that we had is one that we know we're going to fight about, so we'll just get it out of the way. Um, we had a couple options, but this is the one we landed on because as soon as we started talking about it, we started arguing about I, it. I, so said, I said you're wrong again. Why not just talk about it now in front of you? Uh, and that is, do you think VR uh, is established as a full entertainment medium, yes or no? And, of course, back up your reasoning. No. I think it's still a niche market. I think it niche. is I think it is still in development. I think it is has the potential to still go and become a full medium. The reason I don't think it is is it's not hit mainstream yet. It has not gone to the masses. Sony is not mainstream. PlayStation is not mainstream. Sony is mainstream. PlayStation is not mainstream. You don't think it is? No. I mean, what is considered 40 million to be people out of 7 billion people versus I don't know how many people are on Facebook. But how many people know what a PlayStation is? That doesn't matter. How many people know what PSVR is? That's true. Exactly. So, what I'm my my thing is for it to go to to become a mainstream medium. What I was I told you before, and then you're like, you should shut up and save this for the show. <laughs> is uh, this is how you know we do a show? It's like shut up, this, stop this conversation shut now. Up, let's argue later. <laughs> yeah, in um, front of a camera. Uh, I said it has to involve video games, which it does. Has to involve TV shows. Has to involve movies. 
has to involve some sort of mainstream online content. Mm. So for me, there's no true VR movie that exists fully visual length films. You can't go to AMC or short movies, whoever. But no, no yeah, full length. You, you can't go to any of these places and watch a VR movie, which I think would be fucking fantastic one day. Mm. Um, there's no TV shows that are true VR in the works, but there's, not there's, out yet. Yep. Again, it's it's get it's moving towards that. I don't think it's there yet. And then the other thing is mainstream. I I use the argument of again Facebook. I think Facebook, who you made the point that they purchased Oculus, but they've not done anything with it yet. And to me, Facebook has the ability to say, "Hey, we have this technology for whatever they're going to use it for." There's 500 billion people, which is only seven billion in the world, but there's 500 billion people on our on our platform. If one percent of them uses that. That is a lot of people. Mm. So I mean, it's it's. What do you think's holding them back? I think they're waiting for the people to figure out what VR is. Gotcha. Because again, the R and D. Because early on, R and D is so expensive. It seems like it would be an odd purchase to make if you didn't have an idea in mind for how you were going to utilize it. It kind I've, of just been VR is cool, right? Buy one of them guys. I think they have an idea, but I I don't think they're they're ready to show it off because VR is. Again, R and D is expensive. It takes a lot of time, and I think they kind of want to do. Do you think it'll be social media based? I think it'll be social based. Okay. I don't know if it's social media. I would love one of the things I could see Facebook doing because Facebook is pure social, or any platform for that matter, is a like I don't say chat room because that's not the right thing, but like a social experience that you get only in VR, where you could go hang out and go to these places like the beach with your friends in VR or you can go hang out and it's really weird to say because part of me wants it and part of me doesn't because we're so disconnected already but as, as a human race you mean yeah, yeah I mean as like think about think about Facebook here's we're gonna, we're gonna get real deep in the Facebook here let's do it so Facebook there's an argument that people are on Facebook to build their ego to get likes get comments the more likes you get the better you feel the more comments you get the better you feel the more people you think like you the more people you that. think you interact with yeah it's not your real life. How many of those people do you interact with outside of that platform? And, like, it's funny because when I posted, we, we hit 1,000 subscribers. And when I I posted a couple of days ago saying, right before we hit it, I was like, I don't talk numbers very often on my personal account. This is really cool. And seeing the amount of people, and this is no knock on anybody who, who liked it or said congrats because it's cool. But how those people that I really talk to either on a daily, weekly basis is very, very few. Mm. And it's it's quite interesting because I feel like that's going to get more and more disconnected as we go along. There was I can't remember who said it, but there's a person that says this generation is most connected and disconnected at the same time, mm. where we have the ability to everyone get in touch. Everyone knows with, where everyone is yes. at all times, but do they we care? Don't necessarily care enough and to reach out to them. And there's not a deep relationship there. It's yeah. it's more it's a superficial. And you also like everybody decides what it goes on Facebook. You're not going to put the shitty stuff on Facebook that often. Well, or that's unless the point it's super that I like shitty. to make often is the fact that like, when a lot of people say like, you know, I look at Facebook and I see everyone else that has such a great life and they're doing all these great things. No one puts their worst moments yeah. on Well, Facebook. we were talking beforehand. You know I, mean? I won't say who, who we were talking about. We were talking beforehand where some people think we're really cool and I was like, we're not. Like, yeah. complete opposite of that. And it's just like, that's not, not cool. That's, I mean, we like to think we're not complete losers but we are literally sitting what's in a, wrong with losers we're literally sitting in a basement right now yeah on a tuesday afternoon we're really recording. good at faking yes like if you if we could turn off the the light here for a sec the studio you would see just, just kind of how bare bones everything is in this i mean there's not been, there's not been a lot of outsiders that we've let into this scenario but trust me uh the view from here is i mean the very, lights very different. the lights are set up on your desk there's i mean it's mm -hmm. it's crazy the camera's Set up on a cameras up on like, yeah on like a table that my wife made. Our audio equipment is right next to it, so we can see the timer. We have three lights that are around us at different angles, and then a giant green screen behind us. And this table, uh, and which you can't see right. There's Tom's collection of stuff right off screen. There's yeah, a computer this, right here. Like this table, believe it or not. And I'm gonna I'm gonna literally lift up the curtain here for a second uh -oh, if I can. I have to be a little careful. Uh, uh, I, I, got the, I got the laptop. If you got the curtain. You're, you're, you're not, you fail. Jeez, how much curtain do it we have? It was hanging a lot down there. I don't know if you could see any. You see this it's white, white here? It's an air hockey table. This is an air hockey table. Uh, that's all. Oh, oh you, now you did it. You could, like, tidy it up a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna, you know what? I'm going to break the wool even more. I'm going to come around here. Uh oh I'm scared. There you go. 
So let me just tidy this up a little bit. But this is literally Bye, Tom. just an ice, an air hockey table that my wife bought, and she thought it would be fun for us to play air hockey with. And we played it like twice. And then um, we put a black sheet over it black sheet to make it look better. It, and we have a reporter's desk for <laughs> code name Morpheus. So you know that's that's how like low key everything is here. But, but uh, getting, we're getting back to the topic. getting back to the topic of cool. I I, yeah. I don't think I don't. I don't think we're mainstream, or I don't think that we're mainstream yet with PSVR. I don't think it's it's there yet. I think it still has potential to be there. I still, I'm trying to get this. You completely put the. I did up. fuck it up pretty good, didn't I? <laughs> you did. You made it count. Um, I I think it has potential to be there. I still think we're in early stage. For me to have the kind of validated as a mainstream media source, there has to be some sort of major company, whether that's Facebook, Apple movie studio whatever it may be that comes in and says we're doing all we're not just doing one we're doing all our videos that are compatible in this media mm. or we're doing or we're gonna have always have a movie that Similar comes out in this media to every so like often. sony and blu-ray yes it has to become that sort of thing it has to become a standard it has to become more more widely accessed by the masses i think we live a lot of times in a bubble because we report on vr we are around vr a lot the average, it seems like even, it's bigger than it even, is. Yeah, even if you look at PSVR, again, there's, I don't know how many places, I'm going to say 50 million because I feel like that's a good number, 50 to 60 million at this point. They've sold, what, maybe 2 million mm. PSVRs? Close to it. So of that niche market that is PSVR or PS4, you then have another niche market of PSVR. And then same thing with Oculus and Vive, they're under 300,000 units. I think so. the thing to remember here, though, is that is that even though it is not exactly like blowing out of the water with like 50 60 million people that use it regularly it's definitely something that is like it's like it's almost like one of those word of mouth titles we talked about in the indie please add details podcast yesterday i think vr works that way a lot in terms of like if you remember when minecraft first came out and it was just kind of this little thing that notch put together and there was a few people that dug it a few people that didn't and then at some point like everyone that actually had chance to try it was like actually this is fucking incredible and now you can play minecraft on a calculator but it's, it's one of those things to me that seems like it's going to almost have to be word of mouth based mm -hmm. on what it is. Yes. So it's not something... Um, I consider it to be an established and that, medium, and that, which is and the, that, the counterpoint. Yeah, and that um, word of mouth, I think, has to come from somebody significant that is not selling something on it. True. Um, but I think it's an established which is what medium. We're trying to do. And I think that's because, you know, they're using it in hospitals, like we had mentioned earlier, for, for patients to help healing. They're now using it for, you know, other purposes for granting uh, wishes for, for seniors that are uh, terminal. Uh, I had a guy that I spoke to the other day that was looking to implement uh, a row of VR headsets into his church. And he had actually gone and taken all of these 360 uh, photos and things and videos uh, in these kind of really famous uh, European uh, cathedrals and, and things like that and he wanted to put them there so that the people that would never have the chance to go to mm -hmm. you know Germany or whatever and see one of these places could actually just put the headset on and do it and um, I think the short movies are getting there we're starting to see a lot more of those being made you look at something like Illuminate you look at something like Control mm -hmm. and those types of things were really well received experiences really good for the medium again starting points but establishes a, a sort of a you know this is the beginning of us being able to do this this. And we're still in that phase with VR where everything is like, okay, let's try this now. Does that work? Yes. Let's continue with it. No. Let's look at other ways of doing it. So it is established, I think, but it's it's very much tweakable and very much to the point where even though everyone kind of has an idea of what VR is, and honestly, I think everyone's had an idea of what VR is since the 80s, but it's just that no one really understands the new VR, and no one really understands, like, how, to how it. far it's come. There's a difference between perceiving it and actual use. Yeah. So I think it's established in terms of the fact that people know that it's now a thing that people can do. I don't necessarily think it's established in the sense that, like, now it's, uh, you know, it, like you said, it's mainstream. It's not mainstream. It's definitely still niche or indie, as I suppose. Um, um, but I think we'll get there, and I think we'll get it real fast. So I'm saying it's established purely based upon the the minimum indie type experiences, the fact it's being utilized in places in healthcare and other areas. There are movies being made. There are TV shows being made. They're just not quite there yet. So the fact that they are even 
bothering to create a pure VR uh, TV show or a pure VR movie means that it's enough of an established medium for that to happen to begin with. If it wasn't established, I don't think they'd take the risk. Or somebody's paying think them. they do that. I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, potentially, but, uh, but a lot of the stuff that's been coming out, there's no one like, like there's no Sonys behind them saying, yeah. hey, make this TV show. They're just people that are excited about it. And as you know very well, as a, as a video, videographer and being a video editor for many, many years, they lo- you love the newest ways of doing things. Like mm-hmm. no one thought drones were established media, but now there are people that are hiring drone photographers to go to concerts, to go mm-hmm. to special events and take drone footage. There's fucking esport drone races where people, you know, actually race drones, and that's becoming a more popular thing. So they're definitely getting there. I think the kind of thing that they need, honestly, aside from word of mouth and aside from it to actually have some TV shows and movies and stuff related to it, is stuff like. Esports, like that kind of those types of things, or V sports, as they were uh, pointed out by uh, the Spark team, um, where you can actually have it on an open platform and make it something that becomes competitive and something that people can enjoy on a stage that is far bigger than what it is right now. Uh, as Skyrim becomes available for the the lower tier users like us, and as uh, Fallout VR apparently becomes available for the lower tier users like us, we're going to see less and less of the indie titles that are sort of holding up the market right now, and more and more of a push towards making AAA games in that realm because once your friend puts on the headset they become converted there's no one that I know of that hasn't put that headset on and said if I could afford it I would buy one and so, I think that's the big issue right now yeah the cost is going. the thing that's holding a lot of people out on it but I think the actual experience of it is already established and it's already like okay we're good enough now we're good enough to take this further the things that are holding us back are different things so it's established but it won't be mainstream until you get like, you know, like you said, multi-billion dollar companies that are actually Netflix. putting stuff out for it until the price can drop to the point where your average consumer can pick it up. But then you think about the price and you think about the fact that something like PSVR is what, 400 bucks, right? To, for the standalone unit. And then you think about like the new iPhone when it comes out. Now, the iPhone does more for you than yeah. VR does, obviously. Well, it's, it, the, but... cost of, the cost of PSVR is $800 if you don't have a PS4. If you don't have a PS4, yes, correct. The, the cost yeah. of getting into... But like we already said, there's already PS4. 50 or 60 million people that do have one. Yes. So the more of them that pick it up, because there's a damn sight more people that have a PSVR than... Uh, PS4, sorry, than have a computer that is capable of running Vive yes, on Yes, but you're putting, you're putting them into a silo of people who have these devices. What about people who don't... For me, for to be established, you've got to get outside that bubble. You have to get to the... Like I said, you have to get the Apples to getting in people's hands. And I think Apple's going to push AR I mean, they're working. Recently. Well, they're they are, but it's but we're not VR, so. but we're not there yet. That's no. what I'm saying. We're I I think it will be in the next few years, but I still think we're in the early stages. That if somebody makes one big misstep, if Sony comes out and just completely butchers something, I think VR could be dead pretty quickly. You think it's just running a, a tightrope? I right think now? right. Yeah, I think right now because I've not again for games purposes, and I've said this many times, but I'm staying behind what I've said. I've not seen enough support from people outside of things that I've, I'm going to believe Sony has paid for and or has some sort of incentive to that have come to PSVR. Same thing with getting movies or stuff like that. Like, if Netflix has a VR section at some point, that, to me, would be like, okay, it's fucking here. Okay. Uh, that kind of thing. So, I... Well, Hulu has a VR mode where yes. you're actually watching it in a VR room, but it's yes, still, like, regular but it's different. Hulu. It's, so, that's Hulu saying, hey, we're going to birth this for a platform that's not content creators making content for which is what's going to establish the media i think mm-hmm. we're still in the wild west of vr i think we're well, learning it's, it's cost more. versus profit isn't it yeah i think we're learning it. i think we're learning more about what vr can do and what you're capable of and how long you can stay in and all this kind of stuff and i think once we get motion sickness is i think so well, i think over that bump i think that the fine once i'm going to use your analogy that uses blu-ray i think once there's a set rule of like this is this is the minimum for vr this is the format we're going to use this is what we expect from it and then from there you build upon it that's when i think we're going to be set right now there's no this is what vr is it for gaming it's control scheme how the fuck do you control one of these things for watching movies is it a 360 video is it a vr experience that kind of like how do you how do you manage that and to me there's that's still where, a lot of gray area yeah that's that's why that's why i'm saying it's not a savage set but i don't want to say it can't be because it's definitely moving towards that direction. I just think as of today, we're not quite there. The steam I, is there though. Yes, it is. It is building. It's a slow burn. And I, I like that as a slow burn. I just hope that slow burn doesn't run out of, run out of steam before it right. 
fizzes out. So right. I'm I'm excited for it. I don't want to because I tend to be a lot of the, the negative one on this, mm-hmm. and but I I think you're it, a negative Nancy. Yeah, I just I'm very <laughs> skeptical of VR. I love VR, but I'm very skeptical of its of its ability to you're be successful. Worried, in the yeah, long you're run. worried about the the vice the the fact that the heist of cards could fall at any given moment when it's like yeah you know. Or, or the fact that that I think that I mean the big thing to me is in with HTC doing the cut is the cost of entry is still so high that yeah. I granted the gear I it's weird because I think gear will push it but I don't want gear to push it because they have eight million units out there yeah but at the same time it's just like I want people to see what this VR can be and what it will be it has the it has the technologically the potential to be something really really cool I don't think we've tapped that potential yet and there'll be something at some point. I mean, you say Resident Evil blew your mind, but I think there'll be something at some point that makes you go even more. Holy fuck! I didn't even think about that because yeah. Resident Evil kind of makes sense. There's yeah, there's definitely there's definitely so much potential, and I think we're making steps in those directions yes. in terms of things like the Move Twos. If the Move Twos do exist and do come out, that changes the game for Sony in a heartbeat because that's the one major complaint that every single person has had about it. Now, if you can make Move Twos that allow for free roaming movement and just more accuracy and that kind of stuff. Then it's nail in the coffin. I think. I think at that point it's like if you okay, do one for one movement on a hand, yeah, that would open up so many doors that are not possible right now. And I think even that is something we think about. Think about like, and they're probably still designing these next headsets. Yeah, too. and I use the example of like the the. I'm gonna use the example of the internet. When the yeah. internet started, nobody had any idea what it would become. Mm-hmm. People knew you could get online. You, the internet started as like chat rooms. You could potentially sell some stuff, that kind of thing, get a lot of information. Look at what it is now and look how much stuff is there and what you can do on it. Doorways got I'm, I'm excited to see. I want uh, VR to go the way of the internet. It's going to be, I think the early stages were, were, I think we're in the middle of the early stages. I would give it, I'm really good at predicting things here. I give it probably three to four years. Mark your calendars. Which is going to be when the next headset comes out, which is going to be the next big leap forward, which will have a price drop, which will also then, either it's a price drop you on the new the one or the old one. materials will just be cheaper by then? And or? I think that'll open the door to a lot more people. Gotcha. I think the cost of entry is the big reason why it's not established yet, because for people to experience, it's the, it's the whole, again, Blu-ray. Why would I make a Blu-ray if I have a DVD player? Or for content creators, why would I make a thing in... 4K if nobody has 4K TVs. What, now can you imagine if they packaged in a VR2 headset with PS5 as part of the deal? You know what I would love? What? The, I think the best way to make a VR headset mainstream is be able to plug it into a TV. Any TV. doesn't matter what brand. There's some sort of connection that's HDMI. All the things in that unit, you plug it in and you can watch VR TV. That would be cool. That, to me, would be like, that's where I think it's going to end up at some point. Whether whoever makes that box or whatever it looks like, I don't know. But I think we'll get to the point where you won't have to have a gaming console to do it. You'll have the Netflix streaming service. If you have Netflix, you can plug this headset in and every Netflix, doesn't matter what platform it's on, will work in VR. Yeah, I, I mean, it goes back as well to the to the update, the firmware update that allowed you to watch 3D movies without having to wear the glasses. Like, that's a small thing, but it's also a it's huge a thing huge for a dying thing. industry mm-hmm. because the 3D movie industry isn't really such a big thing anymore. We had, like, a moment in time where every new movie that came out was in 3D, but now and there's a lot of directors that are fed up It wasn't worth 10 bucks more? Yeah. So I think if they can start doing, like, utilizing some of those features in terms of, okay, you could watch this movie normally or you could watch it in VR and it will be automatically 3D and you don't need glasses so you can just be comfortable, then there's going to be a lot of people looking at that. So it's... Um, yeah, it's yeah. It's, so, uh, so my stance is we're not there yet, but I think we're gonna get there. Your I stance think we're is there, we're there, but we could go further. Yeah. Um. So, what's your stance? Uh, do you think that it's an established medium yet? That's VR in general, by the way, not just PSVR. But uh, do you think virtual reality is going uh, exactly as expected? Do you think there's way more to come? Do you think it is? Uh, a slow burn or do you think that it will fizzle out quickly Uh, let us know in the comments below we'd love to hear from you on this particular topic or reach out to us on twitter at level 2 gamers stl and with that that's our show so anything you wanted to to say bye with or any thoughts or feelings or emotions no not really i mean (laughs) i got them all out right there there you go so thank you so much i do want to i do want to say something I, Go ahead. I lied. All right. Uh, I can't remember if I said on this one, but thank you guys. We did recently reach a thousand, and we are going to do a special video for it. But we do want to take the moment to say thank you specifically to the VR crew because I feel like the VR was kind of that first big push we had with the new content because mm. R slash PSVR has supported us. People have come in and said this is really cool. 
we've had been featured on websites that not really knew who we so were. So many foreign like, oh, here websites. Here we go. It's yeah. like we had one recently in Poland. We had one in Denmark. We've had one in Germany. We've had our podcast in Japan have been insane. So like, I just want to take the time to say thank you. And I feel like a lot of times we get hung up in this content creation cycle of like, next, 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 next. And we'll do a full podcast on this tomorrow if you guys want to watch full feelings on this. But thank you guys so much for supporting us. Thank you so much for just tuning in. Thank you so much for the comments, for the corrections. That's, that's, I love the Man, feedback. We like, got cold out on some of that about this game stuff the, yeah. the other day. That was hilarious. Yeah, we doubled. Why'd you write about this game twice, dummy? I, I, I forgot. <laughs> Jesus. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but yeah, but that, but that kind of stuff. Yeah. But like, we really do appreciate it. I feel like we've gone from... I don't, want to, I don't want to say we're established because we're far from established, mm. but I feel like we now have people who consistently come back and watch us. And if you are here listening on the audio waves or if you're watching us on the video waves, thank you guys so much for supporting us. We've been at this two and a half years, going on three years soon. And it's been a wild ass ride. We're right about where we want to be at this moment in time. And the most important thing is that graph just keeps going up. So the best thing you can do to help us get even further and get better content out of us is just to share, share, like, comment, that kind of stuff. What's what's the phrase on YouTube? Like, comment, subscribe. Also, I I say this every so often, but if you're on uh, audio format, please leave us a rating. It does help. I know this sounds very pluggy and very much, oh, come help support us. It does help. If you you guys want to do something like that, please go ahead and do it. Go to whatever platform you're on, whether it's iTunes, Google, Stitcher, SoundCloud, wherever it may be, and just whatever the rating system is, give it honest feedback. If you like it, cool. If you don't, let us know. And if you guys do want to reach out to us, king at level2gamers.com, tom at level2gamers.com, hit us up on Twitter as Tom said. So that's my rant. We're going to end this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, welcome to the second level. Bye. It ain't no game, but they say welcome to the second level.